Hey guys, it's uh, Jeremy Brockstroman from the Milton campus here. Uh, you guys recently switched over to Lightkey, which is a software we've been using at Milton for a little while, and it's really streamlined our process. It's made our light shows a lot better. It's made us uh, able to record, uh, to program a lot quicker. And uh, so I just wanted to shoot a few videos about the basics of it um, to get you guys up to speed so that you can create these shows. I mean, let's let's admit, let's be honest, you have like a billion lights in your system. And so uh, Lightkey really makes it so that you can control those things and create really complicated looks really quickly and easily. Um, and so I just want to go over some of the basics of that. I don't want to go over anything obvious here. I really just want to share some tips and tricks that make it really, really easy to use this, use this software that you wouldn't, you might not know otherwise. So uh, I'm just going to go over it real quick. In this video, I'm just going to talk about basic control. We'll go over some of the programming stuff a little later, but right now I want to share some tips and tricks that will help you design and control your lights and create looks a lot quicker and a lot easier and really cut your programming time in half. So uh, let's get started with it. Obviously you have a layout of your stage right here. Uh, you've got your, your rail in the ceiling for your front lights. Uh, you got a mover in the middle. You got your like uh, LED wash lights there. These are the three rails above the stage. This is the one in the very back, the middle, and then the front. Uh, so it's kind of a 3D looking layout here. You got your four movers on stage, you got your hazer here, uh, your side lights, the, the slim pars, um, you got your house lights here, all on, all on one thing. And then these three guys, these are just devices that stay on all the time. What these do is they provide power to each of these rails, right? This is just some channels that are parked so that these rails have power. <clears throat> so those guys are going to stay there uh, and stay on. Uh, they, they're not really controllable. So, all right. So uh, let's go ahead and select a fixture. And when I do, you'll notice that its attributes show up in the design window and I can control it. Easy stuff, right? I can slide the dimmer up to turn them on. I can change color. I can put a gobo on them. I can get that gobo rotating. Uh, I can sl like select these two and then change the rotation direction by hitting that button again. Uh, I can put a prism on them. I can hit strobe and then change the speed of the strobe. <coughs> really simple stuff, right? That's the obvious stuff. Um, but what I really want you to pay attention to uh, is this window right here. I'm going to stop that strobing because I'm going to have a heart a stroke. Anyway, uh, this window right here on the bottom right, the keyboard shortcuts. This is where the power of this software lies, is in the ability to use keyboard shortcuts to cut down the time to do absolutely everything, right? So, um, for instance, this first one up here, when I, whatever's selected, it'll show you keyboard shortcuts for that thing. So, when I select the lights, it shows me all the keyboard shortcuts for those lights that I have selected. So if I hit Shift D, it allows me, it selects the dimmer, and then I can enter the value that I want the dimmer to be at. So I can say, hey, 32%, or 55%, or 10%, 0%, you know, whatever I want to do, 100%. Um, that just gives me a lot, it's a lot quicker to be able to select those things and punch those keys real fast than to have to mouse over and then select and drag and do that. That's a lot slower process, right? Especially if I have to do it for a bunch of different lights it's just gonna cut the programming time down by, by half, uh, which is really cool. So always be looking over at that shortcuts, that keyboard shortcuts page to see what's possible. Also because there are attributes of these lights that are in the keyboard shortcuts, but are not in the design panel here. And this is really, I don't know why they did this, but for instance, to get to your iris and focus uh, uh, attributes, you have to use a keyboard shortcut. So if I scroll down here on the shortcuts window, you'll notice Shift F is change focus. So if I hit that, it allows me to sharpen up my gobos or make them more blurry, but I have to use the keyboard shortcut because they're not in the design panel, right? Same with iris. If I hit Shift I, it goes into the iris and I can make them real wide or I can make them real narrow like those cool laser beams that a lot of lighting designers you'd like to use. While I'm in my iris, if I look at this, it says I can pinch to zoom too. Look at that. I can pinch them to, to change the value. That's pretty cool. Or I can use the arrows to step by 10% increments. So you have a lot of ways to control that it's, that's really quick uh, and really intuitive. Um, the other one, uh, I, to get to my position commands, I can do one of two things. I can uh, click and hold 
and that brings up position, and then I can drag the dot around to position them in any way I want. Uh, or when I select light, I can hit Shift P. That's pretty easy, right? And that Shift P is a lot quicker than having to mouse over to the light and then hold down on it. Um, notice the keyboard shortcuts now that we're in the position mode. Uh, I first off, I've got all these numbers that give me like preset pan positions. So if I hit nine, boom, it's gonna pop to that position. If I hit seven, boom, it'll pop to that position. I can also use the arrow keys. If I hit up and down, it's gonna tilt, which is pretty nice. If I hit left and right, it's gonna pan, which is pretty sweet. Uh, that really allows me to hone the positions in really accurately. Um, so I can maybe like use my mouse to move the dot where I want it generally and then use the arrows to hone it in, right? Another one that I really use a whole lot is this lock tilt and lock pan. Um, this is really handy because if I hold shift and then I drag the dot, I can only pan. It'll lock the tilt in place and I will only be able to pan, which is really nice when you're trying to be accurate with your positioning. If I hold uh, command, it will only tilt, which is really nice because a lot of times I want to tilt my lights, but I already have them panned where I want them to be. And if I try to freehand that, I'm gonna end up changing the pan position. Like, look, I'll try to make it perfect. Ah, I'm still changing the pan, you know? So I gotta hold command so it doesn't change the pan, right? Or tilt, so it doesn't, or uh, shift, so it doesn't change the tilt. So that's a really handy way, and I wouldn't know that if I wasn't looking at this bottom right window for my shortcuts. So always be, whenever you select something, whenever you're trying to control something, take a gander at that bottom right window to your keyboard shortcuts and learn those keyboard shortcuts because I promise you if you know them, it will it will make the software so much more intuitive to use. You know, there's nothing better when you're trying to program than when the software kind of gets out of the way and everything becomes muscle memory and that's what keyboard shortcuts allow you to do. So you'll be able to program twice as fast. You'll be able to do everything so much more easily uh, if, you, if you have those short keyboard shortcuts committed to memory. Um, you'll be able to create looks in seconds without even thinking about it, right? Without having to go through these menus and hit buttons. So that's, that's a big deal about this specific software is the keyboard shortcuts are really the bread and butter of what makes the software so easy to use. Uh, so let's go over a couple other things. This is one of my favorite aspects of this software and that is uh, attribute fanning, all right? So fanning applies um, different attributes to things uh, across a bunch of fixtures. So I'm gonna turn on a bunch of fixtures. I'm actually gonna take out these spots. I don't want these on. So just my, my colors on my top lights, right? I'm gonna hit Shift D 100 so to turn them on. And then uh, I'm gonna, if, if you notice, every time you mouse over an, uh, uh, an attribute name, this little drop down arrow appears, right? On every single one. So I'm gonna to come to color, I'm gonna hit my drop down, I'm gonna hit add color fanning. This is really exciting, watch. All right, so it, it, as you can see, it's fanning or fading one color into another across a whole bunch of fixtures. Really cool, so let's create a fan here. Uh, I'm gonna select this and make it blue. And then I'm gonna select this and make it say red. I'm gonna select one in the middle and make it yellow. So as you can see, whatever anchor points I set or whatever colors I set, it fans from that color to the other color across the fixtures I have selected. That's really cool because it allows me to uh, get these really cool colorful kind of scapes across a bunch of fixtures and I didn't have to go in and change the color of each individual fixture to get there. <coughs> so it allows me to control the billion fixtures I have at P PLT uh, really quickly and easily and to create really cool complicated looks within seconds. Uh, so utilize that fanning and the great thing is I can fan any attribute I want. That was just color. So let's go to my stage lights here, uh, shift D at 100 um, and let's uh, go to the position. So shift P, I'm gonna go to the drop down on position and I'm gonna hit add position fanning. All right, now let's set a position for this. So we'll put it at, say, 60 degrees uh, at 90. And then I'll put this one at, say, negative 60 degrees 
at 90. That was probably a bad example. Let's choose a different value. Uh, da, 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 shift P. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll put it about there. So we'll tilt it at 42. 42 and 33. And then this one at 42 and 33. Boom. As you can see, it's fanning the position. What did I say? 42, 33? Uh, it's fanning the positions across all of the lights. And I'm just, ch I'm just changing the values of this one and this one. And it's fanning that across so I can get that like nice auto fan. Really easy to do. Uh, and you can do this with any attribute. Uh, say I want to fan, I don't know, iris for some reason. I want to make, I'm going to come to the drop down, add iris fanning. So I'm going to make this one like 10% and this one 100%. Now they go skinny to, to, to wide uh, and it fans that. So you can control a lot of fixtures all at once and fan values across. So you're not just doing like simple looks where all the lights are doing the same thing. You can make them all do different things and have really complicated, cool looking things uh, without spending a lot of time controlling individual fixtures. It just makes everything so much easier and it, it makes your looks better and it makes it able so you can create looks in seconds. So I'm a, I'm a really, really big fan of fanning <laughs> uh, and the keyboard shortcuts. So every time you select something, take a look at those keyboard shortcuts, see what you can do with them because if you commit those things to memory, it's going to make it really easy uh, to program and to create cool looks. So that's what I got for this one. We'll go ahead and stop it there. We'll talk about creating scenes and presets and cues a little later, but for now, that's the basics of control. Uh, get that in your memory, get that in your mind. Uh, so you can really start to create cool looks really, really quickly with this software. And, uh, we'll do some more videos on some other stuff later, but that's about all for now.